let's talk today a little bit about some of the problematic compounds that are found in fruits and vegetables. I know we've been told that they are the greatest thing in the world and we should eat unlimited quantities of them as much as possible every single day. But is that really the best advice for every single person out there? And I would say that no. I think it's not. I think that there are people that can do well with that, but there are many people that actually struggle with that. And let's talk about some of the compounds that might be contributing to that. And if you have some of these symptoms, you might consider reducing foods that are high in those particular So the first one a lot of people are familiar with is something called oxalates. So oxalates are organic pesticides, which are found in plants. When eaten, they often combine things like calcium to form crystals within the body. Now these crystals can get lodged within various tissues in the body, causing all sorts of problems. So eating large amounts of oxalate containing foods can lead to the buildup of these oxalate crystals in the body. Some potential harms associated with this include things like kidney stones. In fact, the number one kidney stone that we see, about 80% of all kidney stones, are calcium oxalate kidney stones. You know, this is something that over time, building up more and more oxalates can lead to that. A lot of people will develop gastrointestinal symptoms from high oxalate consumption. And so, again, this causes, you know, interference with absorption of numerous minerals. This can lead to bloating, gas, abdominal pain, diarrhea. Also, you know, because sometimes it binds with some of these minerals, we can actually end up with nutritional uh, deficiencies over time. There are uh, documented cases of actual neurotoxicity when people have had too high of, of, of oxalates in the diet. And this leads to things like muscle weakness, ataxia, and tremor. So oxalates are present primarily in fruits, vegetables, including dark leafy grains, nuts, seeds, uh, berries, tea, sweet potatoes, and beets. So there can be problems with those foods. Not to say that no one should eat those, but just be mindful. If you have some of these symptoms, it might be the oxalates. So the next category are things called phytates. Now phytates are naturally, again, naturally occurring toxins found in plant food. They're there mainly in seeds, uh, leaves and stems of legumes, and nuts, some root vegetables. When eaten by a predator, uh, phytates will cause digestive distress and damage the gut. This is because the phytates are there to protect the plants from being eaten. Now the amount of digestive distress experience is supposed to deter that animal from eating the plant again. Now if you continue to eat the foods with phytates, they may cause holes to form in your gut or the so-called leaky gut situation which leads to things that are not supposed to be absorbed past our, our gut and then we end up with, with certain problems down the road, inflammation, perhaps autoimmune issues, things like that. Compound number three are something called tannins. Now tannins are naturally occurring compounds that play a role, once again, protecting the plants from predators and parasites. We're seeing a kind of a common theme there. Plants want to protect themselves and they do so by, you know, disturbing all these you know, potentially toxic compounds. So, so when you eat or drink tannin containing foods, the tannin is bind to proteins and minerals in the digestive system, re once again, reducing their bioavailability and potentially causing nutrient deficiencies. Tannins can cause digestive problems such as stomach cramps, nausea, and diarrhea. Common uh, tannin containing foods are things like tea, uh, red wine, grapes, uh, pomegranates, berries such as cranberries, blackberries, and strawberries. Uh, nuts, almonds and walnuts in particular, uh, certain fruits such as persimmons and apples, uh, legumes, lentils and chickpeas, uh, herbs and spices such as thyme, rosemary and cinnamon, dark chocolate, and coffee. Again, I don't want to say no one should ever eat these things, but again, if you're experiencing symptoms, it may be time to say, hey, let's cut back on this, okay? Number four is salicylates. Now, a lot of you guys have heard of salicylic acid. That is the uh, active ingredient in aspirin. So sal salicylates are another chemical, once again, designed <laughs> to protect the plants from being eaten. Now, they can react in the body differently. On one hand, it can serve as an anti-inflammatory that reduces overall pain in the body. Now, on the other hand, some people have very negative reactions to salicylates. Some people will develop headache, fatigue, swelling, uh, digestive uh, problems, skin problems, asthma, depression, uh, tinnitus, and other adverse reactions. So salicylates are higher in less cooked, less ripe foods and are often more concentrated in the peel or outer layers of fruits and vegetables. Common sources of these salicylates include things like apples, cherries, grapes, citrus fruits, kiwi, mango, papaya, peaches, plums, and pretty much all berries. Vegetables, you know, nuts, herbs, often in some beverages like coffee, tea, wine, beer, and fruit juices. And then often we see them in personal care products like things like certain shampoos, uh, toothpastes, mouthwashes, and lotions, and of course, medications. Okay, number five is histamine. Histamines are chemical byproducts that break down of certain proteins in the body. They also also function as inflammation signals for the rest of the body. So when the immune system senses what, per, what is perceived to be a, a invader, it triggers mast cells in the immune system to release histamine. Now a specific enzyme called DAO 
Diamine oxide usually breaks down histamine in the gut and the kidneys. However, certain genetics or high amounts of stress can deplete your stores of DAO. This can leave you susceptible to the negative effects of histamine. Too much of it can lead to chronic inflammatory conditions. And so people will end up with things like hives, puppy eyes, itchy skin, depression, brain fog, or even IBS. Now foods that are naturally high in histamine include things like aged cheeses, which again are not a fruit or vegetable, pickles, sauerkraut, avocado, spinach, eggplant, yogurts, dried fruit, yeasted breads, aged meats, blue cheese, and all fermented alcoholic beverages tend to have this. Now there's other foods that are quote unquote histamine liberators, which cause histamine to be released into the body. Include things like pineapples, bananas, citrus fruits, tomatoes, wheat germ, beans, chocolate, tea, mushrooms, nuts, and strawberries. Okay, finally, let's come to something called alkaloids. So alkaloids are formed in a variety of plants called nitrogen. Shades. Again, they can they can range from anything from you know mildly troublesome to people to outright you know deadly toxic to humans if not prepared correctly. So some people are particularly sensitive to nightshades, and they can have things like joint pain. Again, digestive problems. Pretty much all these things can potentially cause digestive problems, as you guys can see. Allergy symptoms, autoimmune flares. Nightshades include tomatoes, eggplants, potatoes, tobacco, goji berries, bell peppers, chili peppers, pimentos, gooseberries and other forms of peppers like poblanos, uh, jalapenos, serrano peppers, and things like that. Okay, one other, uh, you know, I, I'm gonna call this a, a compound, but it's fructose. Now fructose appears, you know, very commonly, particularly in sweeter foods, fruits particularly. And while it's not technically classified as a toxin, it can have toxic effects when eaten in excess. And the definition of excess depends on who you talk to. Too much fructose, again, too much of anything can be a problem, so too much fructose can lead to obesity because it's metabolized a little differently from some of the other sugars like glucose, and, and galactose. So fructose has its own special uh, metabolic pathways. Uh, insulin resistance, fructose can meta is metabolized in the liver where it can interfere with insulin signaling and lead to insulin resistance. Now, also, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, which is becoming so common, now it's been certainly linked to the consumption of high amounts of fructose, particularly when it comes in things like high fructose corn syrup, which, you know, none of us should be consuming any of that stuff. Now also cardiovascular disease, excessive fructose consumption has been found to elevate triglyceride levels and increase blood pressure. And these things are clearly linked to negative outcomes when it comes to cardiovascular disease. So my thoughts on this now, again, I'm not here to tell everybody that no one should be eating fruits and vegetables and are poisonous and should be aware. What I would say is if you're experiencing health issues, don't forget to think about that fruits and vegetables could potentially be causing those issues and taking a time to eliminate those for a period of time. Now, again, it's very easy to go on a meat-based elimination diet. You, you exclude everything and, and then you add things in one at a time and that's a, that's a good way to do that. But don't forget that these things potentially do cause real problems in people. And a lot of people go years and years and years because they think they're doing the right thing. Their doctor told them to eat lots of whole grains and fruits and vegetables and they're still sick and they can't figure it out and the doctor can't figure it out. Well, maybe, just maybe, it might be some of those fruits and vegetables.